Hey friends and family, after getting more popular vote than any other dementia patient in US history, Joe Biden certainly become very well known for being a great president. Oh, took a little something out of my soul just saying that. And he's also known for obviously being super honest in ways that aren't accurate relative to reality. So accordingly, let's take a look at President Brandon's top 10 biggest lies so far. And at the end of this video, I'll share why it's okay that he lies and how none of it's his fault. Biden said that January 6 rioters killed two police officers. He made this claim while he was giving a speech AKA trying to read off a teleprompter at his alma mater, the University of Delaware, where he looked no less than 190 years old, as you can see here. Now that's at least an improved lie from a speech he gave in Wisconsin, where he implied that rioters killed five police officers. Now the reality is that the rioters, many of whom were peacefully led into the Capitol building by security guards, didn't kill anyone. Even though the media tried to frame it differently, one Capitol Police officer died on January 7th after a medical examiner determined that he died from two strokes. And a Metropolitan Police officer and a Capitol Police officer both killed themselves following January 6th. And we're still awaiting word to see if their suicides were caused by themselves or the Clintons. So that leaves zero as the exact number of police officers that rioters killed on January 6th at the Capitol. However, we can confirm that the number of protesters who have been illegally imprisoned as political prisoners following January 6th is much higher than zero. Number two, withdrawing from Afghanistan while claiming a Taliban takeover is unlikely. And then the Taliban takes over immediately. Watch. Back in July, you said a Taliban takeover was highly unlikely. Was the intelligence wrong or did you downplay it? There was no consensus. You go back and look at the intelligence reports. And once the Taliban took over, shockingly, Biden claimed that military advisors didn't warn him against withdrawing troops from Afghanistan. However, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, General Mark Milley, head of U.S. Central Command, General Kenneth McKenzie, and Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin, which I guess being top military advisors would qualify them as military advisors, all testified before the Senate that they recommended maintaining a presence of U.S. troops in Afghanistan and that their input was received by Biden. But then Biden made two wrongs a right with a third wrong when he said, if there's Americans left, we're going to stay to get them all out. And well, if by leave no man behind, you mean leave men behind, then yeah, he's honest. And I guess in this Afghanistan piece is Biden's second biggest lie. There were actually three lies within this one lie, but they all left people dead. But I think there was a real good chance that Biden was identifying as telling the truth when he was lying about Afghanistan. So unless you're a biologist, you better just shut up unless you want to be censored. Number three. Biden claims there was no when he took office. Hi, I was born in 1981 and I attended Woodstock in 1969. Uh, bro, that math doesn't add up. Yeah, that's because math is racist. In spite of the world passionately not caring, Biden made sure the world knew he was on December 21st, 2020. Biden then took office on January 20th, 2021. I'm not totally sure, is 2020 before or after 2021? Like, I don't know, but Biden sure seems honest. But luckily, Biden's never told any other lies about the <clears throat> Oh, except, but number four, Biden says he won't make <clears throat> mandatory. And then he makes a good old fashioned <clears throat> mandate. But who cares if he lied about this? All that's at stake are your freedoms, liberties, and the U.S. Constitution. Not really a big deal if you're ushering in a communist agenda. So let's move on. Now it's time for a little nostalgia as we throw it back to Biden in the 1980s as he's practicing his stellar political honesty as he lied about going to college on a full ride, graduating with three degrees on the top half of his class, and being the top political science student. I went to law school on a full academic scholarship, the only one in my, in my class uh, to have a full academic scholarship. Went back to law school and in fact ended up in the top half of my class. I was the outstanding student in the political science department at the end of my year. I graduated with three degrees from undergraduate school and 165 credits, only needed 123 credits. Biden now concedes he did not graduate in the top half of his law school class, that he does not have three degrees from college, and that he was not named Outstanding Political Science Student 
in college. Newsweek says Biden actually went to school on a half scholarship, ended up near the bottom of his class, and won only one degree, not three. Whoa, that's exciting. But truth isn't a part of Marxism. So it's like he was being true to Marxism when he lied. And I like that honesty. Number six, Biden claims he was arrested as a teenager for standing up for civil rights. Yeah, and I used to be Superman, Joe, but I quit saving people from burning buildings because like you, I decided to burn down the country instead. Spoiler alert, Biden was never arrested for standing up for civil rights. Even his arms of censorship couldn't cover up this obvious lie, as PolitiFact rated Biden's claim as false, and the Washington Post gave it four Pinocchios. But I'm sure standing up for civil rights would have prepared Biden really well for passing the crime bill in 1994 and for giving the eulogy at the funeral of a KKK leader. While present day treating the civil rights philosophy of Martin Luther King Jr. of judge a person based on the content of their character, not the color of their skin, like toilet paper. Next lie, please. Biden said his Build Back Better agenda would cost zero dollars and add zero dollars to the national debt. I mean, that seems likely. Wouldn't some kind of charitable organization be implementing this kind of thing? But according to the Congressional Budget Office, if Biden got everything he wanted in his Build Back Better agenda, it would cost over three trillion dollars. Maybe he meant like the cost would be zero dollars, but the price would be three and a half trillion dollars. Because though cost and price have the same meaning, they have very different spellings. Number eight, Biden denies that Antifa exists. He made the claim while looking like a deer caught in the headlights during a debate with President Trump. Watch. Antifa is an idea, not an organization. Uh, Antifa is an idea, not an organization. I mean, I think that's true. And for an organization that doesn't exist, here's a look at one of their websites, rosecityantifa.org. Oh, and the .org stands for organization, which helps further prove that Biden's right when he says Antifa is not an organization. Number nine, Biden says he's creating jobs. Well, according to the New York Post, while Trump was in office, there were a total of 152.5 million non-farm employees. Then the pandemic hit, and that number went down to 130.5 million. That's because many businesses were banned from operating for a prolonged period, which Biden seemed oddly stoked about. And now as businesses are open back up, there's a total of 150.9 million non-farm employees, which is still short of the number from when Trump was in office. But Biden is saying this is from him creating jobs. So the lesson we can learn here is, the best way to create jobs is to tyrannically ban people from working and then eventually let them work again and call that job creation. It's kind of like the best way to feed hungry people is to take away people's food and then once they're starving, give them some of their food back. Which Biden's kind of also in the process of doing that. Number 10, he calls the Hunter Biden laptop Russian disinformation. Now this little lie I'm sure was innocent and I'm also positive it had no influence over the presidential election. So while it's now been proven that the Hunter Biden laptop is real, I'm sure that any incriminating photos or emails linking Biden to illegal activity in Ukraine and China are still just like nothing but disinformation put there by the magical disinformation fairy. So you might want to just forget about the Hunter Biden laptop unless you want to experience the Clinton body count going up by one more. And those are Biden's 10 biggest lies so far. <laughs> It was really hard to whittle the list down to just 10. And, and I mean that in the best way possible. But of course, all of Biden's lies are okay and aren't really his fault. Why is that? Because when you look at the symptoms of the medical condition called dementia, you'll see that along with problems communicating, memory loss and changes in short-term memory are prime symptoms. Not that Biden has any symptoms of dementia, but out of all the ones he does have, we can compassionately understand that when he's not telling the truth, he's not lying. He's just experiencing memory loss and changes in his short-term memory, uh, and at times hallucinations, which is also a symptom. And he communicates those with diminished speech skills, also a symptom while at times also experiencing the additional symptom of disorientation. So it's not his fault and we can trust him. Let's go Brandon, because remember, 
He once said that too. Let's go, Brandon. I agree. <laughs> yeah. That's one thing I agree with you about, Joe.